We're driving a 2023 Range Rover Sport. For those who don't know, it's kind of like a smaller version of the Range Rover and it's a little bit cheaper. This one was fully overhauled for 2023. Coming up, we're gonna tell you why Evy greatly prefers the Range Rover Sport to the OG Range Rover. Let's begin with interior. There's some really interesting material choices in here. Cream, leather, this material, which really feels like it's a scuba suit. <laughs> yeah, it does have a neoprene-like feel to it. When you move over to the doors here, I don't know what this is. It's firm, but it looks like cloth. And then below that on the door inserts, and then also a little panel over here, we have a satin forged carbon fiber material, which by the way is the same material that they use for the roof in the GR Corolla we reviewed not that long ago. It is lacking open storage. I had a really hard time figuring out where the heck to fit my phone. One idea is this little spot over here by our knees, this little pass-through storage area, but I found anytime I turned, my phone would slide right out. Whee! And then this area right here, I was like, when I got in, where do I plug in my phone? It's underneath the front cup holders. There is a storage area here where you can like plug in a phone and then I guess you could like leave it down here if you wanted to, and then you can pull the uh, cup holders out. And then there's another panel on top of that. But I just love like a bin up here. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. We just <laughs> discovered it. Oh my gosh. Okay, we do have a wireless uh, phone charge port right up here that I just totally missed. Me too. <laughs> huh, okay, so there is a slot to put your phone, and because wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto come standard, you wouldn't necessarily have to run a cable down here. Huh. Hmm. So we solved one problem, but the problem we didn't solve is that these capacitive controls for the climate control, we have found them to be finicky in other Range Rover products that we've reviewed. Even with a hard press, they work, but that is not my favorite way to operate a climate control. And then we also have the multifunction knobs here. Push in, you can activate the seat ventilation or heating, but you kind of have to look at it to know what you're doing. And as a driver, I'd rather be talking to you and also occasionally looking at where I'm going. That's a very safe attitude, child. You'll never be a YouTuber. Actually, I am. I'm currently on <laughs> It's a good observation, child. Touche. Moving back into positive territory, we have dual glove compartments. I love the metal clank of the paddle shifters. I really appreciate how adjustable these seats are. There's quick adjustments here, like the seat back and forward. But if you get into the menu here, you can adjust the headrest, like how far it comes out. You can adjust the height of the lumbar because if you are short, you want it to hit you in the right spot. I agree, though I'll add that for my body type, I'm getting some pressure points right here. So test the seats out for your body type. The Range Rover Sport previously offered a third row of seats, but they were very, very tight. They have been abandoned starting in 2023. In the second row, I find plenty of space for my average five foot 10 inch frame, long yes. torso. I like the fact that you've got power adjustable seat backs in the rear there, and I can even fit in that middle position. Depending on uh, who's sitting next to me, I'd be willing to do that for a little while. In the beginning of the video, we teased that we were gonna explain why Evy greatly prefers the Range Rover Sport to the OG Range Rover. The standard Range Rover has a split tailgate. So when you lower that lower portion, it makes it very difficult for a short person such as myself to access all the way to the back. This is a standard lift tailgate, which I greatly prefer. Ah, let us take a moment, the ceremonial failing of the GoPro. And if you'd like to buy a failing GoPro too, use the affiliate link below. We'll get a little bit of a kickback and you'll get a GoPro that'll fail. Restarted. From a functionality perspective, the cargo area is very functional. You've got a little uh, split cargo divider that pops up. It's got these little like bungee spots so you can like hold things in place, power folding uh, seat backs so you don't have to go around to the side to lower them down. Uh, they just motor on down, no problem. And motor back up again. Total cargo space is 31.9 cubic feet. It's not the largest you're gonna find in a five passenger midsize SUV, but totally workable for our needs. Thinking about my short little sweetie, the button to lower the lift gate is on the lift gate and we live in a community with hills, so it's not unlikely that you might find yourself downhill from the vehicle trying to push that button. Leap, leap, sweetie. Speaking of height, kiddo, any issues climbing in and out of the Range Rover Sport? 
Right on. Yeah, we've got uh, the air suspension so the thing can lower down to access height, which makes it easier to get in. It is a little high for me, even in that access position. I think it would be helped if there was any kind of a handle. One doesn't grab a handle in a Range Rover. It's so <laughs> undignified. That would be so much more dignified than how I actually had to climb in. <laughs> and then what about getting the uh, booster seat installed? The latch points don't have a cover, so they're very accessible and the door opening is plentiful. Does that make sense? Sure. As for safety, we've got a full suite of active assist, automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, blind spot warning also comes standard, six airbags. The IAHS and NHTSA haven't rated the Range Rover Sport probably because it's an expensive vehicle, but eh, it's probably safe, right? Right? Oh, and then I also like the fact that the 360 degree camera system comes standard, as do front and rear parking sensors. And that camera will continue to operate even after you get going pretty fast. I think it's kind of helpful for off-roading. How fast are you driving off-road? Sweetie's built for adventure. <laughs> family, what do we think? Is the Range Rover Sport family friendly? Family friendly. Yes, family friendly, but because it's more than $50,000, we're going to say rich family friendly. Rear window test. Oh, is that it? High five anyway. Armrest test. Just like in the standard Range Rover, the Range Rover Sport offers a feature I love, this adjustable inboard armrest, and it's in the perfect spot. People sometimes ask, will you ever give a 100? Yeah, I'm feeling generous. I'm gonna go 100% inboard, and it's a little bit more of a reach to the outboard, so I'll go 90%. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If so, you're welcome to subscribe style. Let me very quickly thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. You can bend them like this. Why? It's made out of a material called resilamide that is patented. That means only flying eyes will give you that kind of durability, bendability, thinness, and lightness. If you're curious to learn more why we wear these in the helicopter or out in the real world, click the link in the description below. And if you're ready for aviation grade eyewear, you can save 10% using the promo code MICA Flying Eyes. In this color combo, the red with the contrasting black roof, I think it looks so good. I like the contrasting roof. It is $1,000, but if you're buying a Range Rover Sport, like, eh, you know, spring for it. I really like how integrated the grill is on the front. I think it just looks really thoughtfully designed. In contrast, those contrasting black bits on the hood and the side, what's that all about? Those are about style, baby. They just look a little tacked on as compared to everything else happening here. I think it's tough because if you create a super smooth design, it could look a little unadorned. The silhouette is a little bit rugged, but the design execution is very smooth. It's so smooth, in fact, that you've got those retracting doors. The door handles? Yes, the door handles. On that note, I like the smoothness when they're retracted, but I'm an impatient man. Having to push a button first, then grab the door handle, I don't have time for that. I'm a very busy man. You know, you know I'm a busy man. You're kind of, you're not doing it. <laughs> In your face. <laughs> <laughs> Also worth noting is that the Range Rover Sport rear driving has the optional 23 inch wheels. And I am so glad we've got a full size spare back there because if you were to get a slash in one, even if you got to the tire store, there is a possibility they may not have a 23 inch tire ready for your vehicle. So having that spare is, is super helpful. What do you think? Do you like the Range Rover Sport? If so, if no, tell us in the comments section in motion. The Vibe driving the Range Rover Sport is very similar to the Vibe driving the Range Rover. You got this adaptive air suspension and it does a really nice job smoothing out the road, even though we're driving on this massive wheel and tire package. Even though you've got the word sport in the name, um, this is not what I would say is a sporty driving vehicle. You can feel that body movement and you can um, you know, hit the limits of the stability control fairly early. So as I try to kind of like push it a little bit in safe spots, even in dynamic mode, while it may be get a little firmer. This is not going to be the sportiest of SUVs. Although it does sound kind of nice. Sounds good. That sound component leads me to my favorite part of the Range Rover Sport, the uh, twin turbocharged V8 that we have in our tester. So there are four powertrains available and uh, we got lucky to have the fast one. Whee! It sounds fantastic and it, it hauls. 
in dynamic mode. It's very hard to smoothly put on the power, so I'm just gonna put us back into normal mode and see if I can drive like a, a normal human being. Yeah, that's smoother. Here, I'm just gonna floor it. Whee! You get that little like, uh. <laughs> Now I will note that it took a beat for the eight speed automatic to give me that downshift between when I floored it and when uh, the power kicked in. But the amount of times that you're gonna just floor it for no particular reason, probably pretty limited. Wait, do you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> Yeah, are you me? If you're me, you'll be doing that all the time. There is a mode in here. If you go to the dynamic eye, they've got like a lap timer and a stopwatch and a G meter. Who's doing that? Are you doing that? If you take your Range Rover Sport to a racetrack, I commend you. In the spirit of driving quickly though, I'm gonna come to a stop. Kiddo, count me down and we'll do full throttle acceleration. Floored. A little bit of delay from the very beginning of the departure, and then you saw when the power kicked in, my phone went flying. If you're curious, Range Rover claims a zero to 60 time of 4.3 seconds for the V8 we're driving. Just like the Range Rover we drove recently, the Range Rover Sport has rear wheel steering. That means the turning circle is comically tight. Lastly, this is $130,000 worth of luxury SUV, and it's on 23 inch wheels with uh, maybe not as much sidewall as I would prefer. So we're not gonna do a big off-road thing, but I will note that four wheel drive comes standard. They do have an optional low range transfer case. You can have up to 11 inches of ground clearance. The one we're driving has an electronic locking center and rear differential, and there are a variety of drive modes to just haunting you to go find some adventure. All right, that's what I think about driving the Range Rover Sport, but what does Sweetie think? Evie's at the wheel. Let's make use of that four wheel steering as you pull us out here. Tide turning circle. That's so fun. So as we pull out here, classic situation, we got a road. I sound like an idiot when, <laughs> of course we have a road. <laughs> Where you need power to get out to avoid traffic. You feel like you got enough power there? I did feel like I had enough power. Do you feel like you had too much power because I know sometimes you can be intimidated by high horsepower vehicles. When this is in dynamic mode, it does feel like too much horsepower. Like I have trouble applying the pedal smoothly and I get doing this, but when it's in comfort mode, I can manage it. Uh, how does it feel in terms of like steering effort and precision? It doesn't feel too heavy. It does feel like it has a little bit of a tendency to kind of pull back toward center. Even though it's got that sport moniker, I wouldn't say this is the sportiest feeling SUV that I've driven. This is a little smaller than the Range Rover we drove recently though. How are you finding the size? I don't feel like we're making great compromises in passenger and cargo space, but it does feel more manageable to drive around. And then what about visibility? Visibility is good all around for me. Overall, are you feeling comfortable driving the Range Rover Sport? As long as I don't remember how much it costs, Yes. Not that long ago, if you were driving $130,000 worth of Range Rover, you'd be much more intimidated. You've come a long way, sweetie pie. It's true. All right, I'm getting back in the driver's seat. Overall, we've got a luxurious driving SUV here that I bet you could take off road, but I doubt you will. Moving onward to emotion factor. Is there some emotion here? Absolutely. There what about now? Ah! <laughs> did, I, did I make more emotion? <laughs> you did. <laughs> oh, okay. Or just okay. the wrong kind. Okay. I was enjoying the luxury. <laughs> the materials chosen, exterior styling, it just screams status. There's also the potential for off-road adventure, though again, I'm doubtful who's gonna do that. But in this particular form with that V8 engine and that sound, oh yeah, there's some emotion to be had there. But what do you think? Are you feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Range Rover Sport of your very own? If so, I doubt you need to sell your current car first. But if you're curious what your current cars are worth or what you should pay for a Range Rover Sport, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. Remarks! Remark number one, infotainment. We've got a 13.1 inch screen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Wireless both come standard. Even though there are a lot of different things you can do here, I did find it easy to find my way around. I think it's because there are multiple ways to access all the functions. The uh, visual presentation is very crisp. This is a nice setup. Over here, we've got a 13.7 inch driver information display. I also like that they've got a quasi under the vehicle view. I have noticed that if you're going over terrain, it's trying to stitch together cached imagery to create the illusion of a translucent hood, and it doesn't always do that fully successfully. Nonetheless, more information is better than less when you're driving off-road. They call that 
clear sight ground view. All right, let's talk engine choices. The basic engine is a turbocharged inline six cylinder, and then there's a more powerful rendition of that. And then there is a plug-in hybrid version of the inline six. Lastly, we got the 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 here in our first edition tester. Regardless of engine, max tow in the Range Rover Sport is 7,716 pounds. That's weirdly specific. Sweetie. Yeah. May I give you a trim recommendation? You sure can. Our trim recommendation is which Range Rover Sport trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. For our trim recommendation, we're gonna say that the base SE trim is plenty. It's got a leather interior, 20-way front seats, seat heating both front and rear, and smart key access. Grand total, $83,000. Of course, if you got the money and the interest, there are fancier ways to get a Range Rover Sport. For 2024, there are a few updates. There's a slight price bump. There's a new SV performance model that'll do zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. And there's a pure electric version joining the Range Rover Sport lineup. As for competitors, the BMW X5 and Mercedes-Benz GLE both have a cheaper base price. The Porsche Cayenne and Maserati Levante are better aligned price-wise with the Range Rover Sport. One other option that would be much cheaper would be the Genesis GV80. And if you're curious what we thought of the GV80, you can click right up here. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comments section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Range Rover Sport, it is a grand English way to traverse varied terrains. Much like the Range Rover that uh, I dubbed the SRN4 hovercraft of luxury SUVs, if that's the case, this is the SRN2. What, no hovercraft fans in the car yet? Still? Family, I think we've done a great job reviewing the Range Rover Sport. May I have a five and a five? And you, come get your high five. Bye. Bye.